Okay. It's being recorded by the host. Okay. Let's uh let's center our hearts in prayer. Creative, crafting, inspiring, loving God. Thank you for this time together. Thank you for the moments we have to let loose with the artistic flair that you imprinted upon each and every one of us. We ask your blessings upon Donna as she guides us today. We ask that you would open our imaginations, our hearts, our souls, and whole lives, that as we listen for you, you might continue to guide us as we prayerfully ponder our calling in such a time as this. Bless our time together, and may this be a blessing, not only to us, but to this world you so love. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, everyone. Well, welcome back to Artful Prayer. I think those of us that are um, that were working on it last year and, and those of us that are uh, facilitating are really glad that we're back again. Um, I am, uh, after last year, we made a few changes. We've decided we should do an introduction at the beginning of each of the classes of whoever's presenting. So I'm going to say welcome to Artful Prayer at First Congregational UCC in beautiful Sarasota. I'm excited we have participants all over the country, though, that are watching. Um, you all know I'm Cindy Woodling, those of you participating, but someone who watches the, the uh recording may not. So that's who I am. I'm one of the facilitators. We plan to meet monthly this year, sort of like we did last year on the second Thursday at 2 p.m. So you can go ahead and put it on your calendars now if you want to make sure you make all of these. Uh, our next session is going to be November 11th at 2 p.m. via Zoom. Um, we do hope to be able to do sessions in person sometime in the future. Um, so and we'd still like to do some of those on Zoom as well. Uh, so we're looking at looking at doing sort of a um, combined Zoom in-person session when we're able to do that. So today, I'm really Ooh. happy to introduce Donna Pappenhausen as our guide for a really special process. Um, most of you know Donna, but I just thought I would share this with you. She describes herself on her Facebook page as an artist, a teacher, a pastor, an expressive arts educator, consultant, a teaching artist, a bead maker, and a jewelry designer. Um, and many of you knew her as being pastor of our church, uh, associate pastor of our church as well. Or um, She worked with the youth. Um, she's been very involved with other UCC churches, helping them with art. And she still continues to do that, even in what most of us would consider retired years. She's um, certified in expressive arts. Um, and I'm really excited that you're going to be our guide today, Donna. So I'm going to pass it off to you. Thank you very much. I'm excited too. Um, I love doing this. I think art belongs in churches and I'm so grateful to Wes and his creative spirit for encouraging the arts uh, at First Congregational. It's, it's just a wonderful opportunity for all of us to stretch our creative spirits a bit. And I've loved this uh, series of sermons that we've been hearing about uh, call and gifts because it speaks to me very deeply. As I've been in a transition of aging, I'm just trying to discern a new call for how I live out my current call. So it's spoken very, very deeply to me in a, in a personal way. Um, today, we're gonna to explore the same ideas of uh, gifts and calling as Wes has been talking about, but we're gonna do it a little differently. We're gonna start with, well, we're gonna start with Picasso. Uh, I have a little quote here from Pablo Picasso. Uh, he says, the meaning of life is to find your gift. The purpose of life is to give it away. And I thought that that fit 
very, very well with the idea of gift and call. Uh, so I thought we'd start with an artist and then move into scripture in the uh, Gospel of Matthew chapter five, two little verses. They were part of a larger uh, lectionary text, but I'm gonna just read the two. Uh, verse 13, you are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but thrown out, but it is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Light. You are light. You are salt. I'm going to focus on the light today. <laughs> and I'm going to shift the metaphor a bit because I believe we're not the light, but we reflect it. Ooh. God is the light source. God gives us whatever enlightens and enlivens our souls. So I want to start with that premise that we are filled with light. We're made of light. And science probably would agree. Atoms, those little things that we're made up of, they move very quickly and they generate heat and light and a field, electrical field around. So we sort of glow. But unfortunately, we don't often see that aura <laughs> or that glow, that uh, our atomic glow, so to speak. Uh, so, so just imagine, imagine that you're not a person, but a prism. And God's light is shining down. But there's a trick here. It, it only does its magic if it enters you at 42 degrees. And that's why I called this 42 degrees, not 43, 45, 41. When it comes in at 42 degrees to a prism, the light, it breaks yeah. that light apart into the beautiful spectrum of color, the rainbow, the Roy G. Biv <laughs> that we all learned as a way to remember the colors uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, Roy G. Biv. Uh, so what I would invite you to do, if you have a couple of pieces of paper with you, let's see, I mixed up a fancy, oops, maybe you can see, there we go. See the 42 degrees over here is the arrow, here's the prism. And it breaks into, I made the seven, seven little channels of, it'll be the color. So we can draw our prism and the light shining in and break it up into the spectrum. That's the first thing we're gonna do on one sheet of paper. If you only have one sheet, use like the half, the top half, cause there's a second little drawing we're going to be doing. So this one isn't gonna get you out of your logical linear brain too much, but the next one probably will. So, and, and color your spectrum, your spectrum of light. Can we see that again? The, um... Oh, sure. Sure, sure, sure. I have to get the light angle right yeah, here. Let's put you... You Okay. Oh, drawing the, yeah, oh, drawing right the triangle here. first the and then a little light beam and then break it into the spectrum of seven different slices. From a, from a triangle and seven mm -hmm. different slices. Okay. Right. And you can, you know, use your own imagination if you want your slices to go all the way around or whatever, just right. have fun with it. Um, and then color them, color the slices. I made more than seven. I got carried away. Yeah, I thought I was counting. That's what I said. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't count. Don't count. Okay, don't count. Okay. As I was processing the next steps, I said, oh, I forgot about those. <laughs> so we're just limiting, going to limit it to 
seven slices of the, okay. the seam. <laughs> <laughs> Seven colors of the spectrum. Yes. Oh dear, I can't remember them. Donna, why seven or nine? What are what's well, the goal? Seven. seven are the vis is the visible color spectrum that we are able to see with our eye. Huh. And that's all I know about it. Uh, it, there are many, many more colors that are seen by birds and insects and I don't know what all else, but we see a range of seven. Okay, here they are. Seven. Seven. Okay. Seven. 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 Because that's the norm, the range of seven, that's what, right? Yes. Because I was thinking about people, you know, colorblind people. Right, that's people normal. who see You're colors exactly. and don't know they're seeing more colors. You know? Well, yeah. The uh, uh, my daughter-in-law, uh, as a matter of fact, is colorblind, and uh, so she she struggles <laughs> having a mother-in-law. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, well, her mother's quite artistic as well, but. Uh, my daughter-in-law just feels that handicap uh, in a whole lot of different ways because of her color blindness. Well, who knew? Now, I found this little exercise or I have expanded upon it, but an exercise uh, that was part of a, um, I think it was a nine month painting class that I took with uh, Shiloh Sophia, uh, the woman I have studied with for quite a long time. And uh, she and her husband teach a class called PRISM. And it is about discovering your gifts. And we explored uh, a whole lot of science and a whole lot of uh, spirituality <laughs> and, and all sorts of things. But um, I'll show you at the end, the, the painting that resulted from that class that was a sort of a, a photograph, a mental, a photograph of a mental image, I guess, uh, of my gifts at the time uh, as illuminated in this painting. I have used this idea of the light through a prism in many ways. Um, I've even preached a sermon on it <laughs> once upon a time. <laughs> Use whatever you get. It's all grist for the mill, as they say. So, if we're really made of light, we are really like the stars, aren't we? Yes, we are. We are made of stardust. Again, mm -hmm. a little bit that's, of that's science I've learned yeah. through, through Shiloh is that. Uh, at, at the Big Bang, when everything yeah. was there, went bang, uh, all of the iron in the world and in the universe came from the moment of the Big Bang, including the iron that's in our blood. Oh. Uh, so literally, <laughs> we are stardust. 
We are stardust. We are. We are good. Yeah. Got our base here. Back to me. And when are you all nearly through I'm with done. your coloring? Okay, I don't want to go too fast or too slow. So. Oh, you said coloring. Coloring your spectrum. Oh. Color your colors. I just drew my lines. Like that. No. Nope. Oh, okay. Fill them in then with the color somehow. Oh. Roy G. Biv. Roy is blue. Red. Red, orange, yellow is Roy. G is green. Biv is blue, indigo, violet. Gotcha. That is orange, which is my favorite color. Who said that? Brent likes orange. Red, orange, pink. It's yeah. Okay. No red, orange. Pink to go. Red. That's not hmm. what about this one? You don't have any great art stores down there, Donna? Where I am? Uh -huh. um, I have a Dick Blick outlet not too far from me. Oh, that's a good thing. <laughs> so that works. Yeah, lately, lately, though, I have been, uh, I order you, online. You don't need it. Oh, yeah. And you don't need anything either, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. I run out of things all the time. I have to go make a canvas run here shortly. Oh. Hey, that's a rainbow fun. Hmm? For those of you who have finished coloring already, um, you can begin to ponder what you, well, maybe you know because of the work Wes has been doing with all of us, uh, what your gifts are. And I'd like you to take each color and write one of your gifts in each color slot. And oh, if boy. you have more gifts and colors, well, just do what I did and add a few more light rays. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> and, you know, one, or, one word, you know, or two. Okay, go. Mm -hmm. Are we writing our gifts? Your gifts, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Green. So that's purple, so indigo is blue. <laughs> I should have provided some music. Maybe I should get my drum and I could be drumming. Right? There you go. <laughs> I have no rhythm, so no, that wouldn't be a good thing. Similar. Look at that. That is driven. 
Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That's a gift. <laughs> Sometimes. And it's okay if you can't think of seven, and it's okay if you've got twelve or fourteen. That's just fine. We're writing them in the colors, or we're making a, a bar, you know, a thing. You know, put them put right inside the color, one for each color. Oh, okay. It, it's just a way to order them. All right. And limit them, perhaps, for those who need limitations. <laughs> Structure. It's structure. Structure. That's right. What do you call somebody who's sort of pragmatic? Does that mean practical? Mm -hmm. Okay. How come I got two balloons still? Oh, that's blue guy. Another, you know, 10 or 15 seconds. <laughs> Wait a minute. You can, you can continue to work on this after. Red. Yeah. Red. Because we have a whole nother section we want to get into and a little meditation I want to do next to help us move into that. Okay. I'd like you to put your colors and pens down and just sort of relax again into your chair and close your eyes. It's very short, but I want you to imagine that you're standing outside of your house on a sunny day, wherever you're living, and, and that you, your body is soaking up the sunlight. You're like that prism. Hmm. And that holy light is shining down on you. And and one of those little beams of light shines down at exactly 42 degrees and you begin to glow in beautiful colors. And, and your neighbors cross the street and, and she begins to glow too, but, but her colors are different, yet they're still absolutely gorgeous. And there's the guy down the street and he's out mowing his lawn and he starts to glow. And his colors are still different yet, but absolutely beautiful. Mm. So you look out over the area that you can see, and you see this glorious glow of colors, all the colors of the rainbow and some new ones. Oh, it's spectacular. It's breathtaking. And you know, that's what God sees every day. Imagine if we could see it. Well, Jesus says, let your light shine. Well, yeah, it shines, but, but how can we make it see? Let it shine so that all those around you can see it. That's scripture. Well, this unique glow, no two of us are alike, is present in how we serve the world, how we share what we know, what we have, what we can do, what we are, our presence with those around us in large and small ways. The important thing to remember is the kingdom doesn't come in its fullness until we all are sharing our gifts, all the colors in the crayon box, as Brenda likes to say. Until we're doing that, the kingdom doesn't come in fullness. Every one of us is needed to save the world. There was a TV show, you can open your eyes now. There was a TV show that says, save the cheerleader, save the world. You know, I forget the name of the show, but that's stuck in my brain. And, and it always made me kind of chuckle because even cheerleaders <laughs> needed to save the world. So the next part is, yeah, we know our gifts, but yeah, we could just sit on them. 
and a lot of us do. Yeah, I don't have to share this. <laughs> I've done my part. <laughs> but imagine that you wanted to. The next part is to draw, whoops, draw a gingerbread man. You can see him there. <laughs> you don't have to get fancy and trying to draw a person. Just draw a little gingerbread figure. I'll see him. And, and then make the, uh, ray, the rays again out from it. I went with seven. And they will pair up to your gifts. I like to make art. And so how do I share that gift? Well, I make the art. I display the art. I give it away, I teach using art, which is another of my gifts. I preach using art, which is another. Sometimes they, they work together in a bundle. Um, so each ray will be a way that you use those gifts or you could use those gifts. Doesn't mean we've activated all of our gifts. We might've chosen in our life to activate only one or two, <laughs> but what are some ways you could? And so when you write them down, that brings them to your conscious mind and makes them available then for you to make a decision if that's a gift you're going to activate in the, in the world. So just take a few minutes and draw your gingerbread person and make your rays again and color them in your colors. You don't have to stick to Roy G. Biv and your colors may be polka dotted or full of hearts or designs or sparkles of light. Design each of those rays any way you want with any colors you want. And then write how you would activate one of your gifts in that, in each ray or group of rays. I don't know. Were they supposed to be seven rays or could you do more? Or you could do more or less. Uh, if you have seven gifts, make seven rays, but you know, this 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 is a little freer than the the last one. Do as, as you think you want to do. These are your unique rays, so you ought to be able to do what you want with them. And then you put a gift with each ray? You put how you would activate a gift, oh. how you would serve the world using that gift. Oh. Or how you already have. <laughs> you may have been using your gifts in the world already. I'm sure you have. 
But if you think up some new gifts or some new potential uses, put them on there too. Shouldn't all be a past thing. There should be some adventure ahead. So like Wes said recently, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are, there's still more to come. Your gifts aren't ever being uh, let to sit on the shelf or shouldn't be, don't have to be. You're never too old. Keep. I fell into that trap recently. Uh, mm. And yeah, so I've decided to get out of it. <laughs> My mother-in-law used to say, age is a state of mind if you don't, or is a matter of mind. If you don't mind, it doesn't matter. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I always appreciated her for that. She was a very vibrant lady, well into her 80s. And she, was, she was a church lady and uh, just was always busy about the Lord's work. Use, use our gift. Mm -hmm. How do you use your gifts? Oh my goodness. And we don't have to finish these uh, at this moment. You can certainly finish them up a little later. So We'll take another minute or so just to get something down to get started because I do want to have a few minutes to uh, to share what we've come up with. And maybe if you can't think of gifts of your own, some of us can help you because we've seen them <laughs> being put to use, practiced. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, I wanted to know how. <laughs> Sarah's using one of her gifts right now. We're contacting a friend who's in life uh, care. Fine, uh, she's fine. This is the only time. I
All right. Let me call everyone back together. And first of all, I think I'll go first just to just to show you what I've done up the top, of course, is my I'm trying to give enough light, but not too much. There we go. Uh, is my prism and down below, I made my personal creative spectrum full of lightning bolts and dots and flowers and leaves and all kinds of things. Uh, I chuckled when I read Wes's uh, reflection on some of his gifts because I too <laughs> share some of those. Um, I like to teach and preach and write. <laughs> I like to tell stories and listen and um, I like to encourage and appreciate. So those are a few, I like, I love animals, I love nature, I love to travel. So those are all, all things that I'm passionate about. I don't use them all, all at once, but um, I do, uh, and I love to make art. It's up there first, actually. So I, I put three or four of mine together as I use my art, uh, art making to help others grow in faith and wholeness through the use of expressive arts and intentional creativity, I create and teach my own curricula. So, you know, those are like the first four or five gifts all sort of integrated, which I think might be part of the function of, of reaching that place of age. It's, it's where knowledge becomes wisdom. <laughs> uh, knowledge is what we know in our head, wisdom is what we share with the world. Um, so that's, that's sort of how I've begun to work on my project. 